Jesus was the incarnate Word of God, and so he preached the gospel to these lost individuals. And the gospel is that Jesus uh, died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and then he rose again according to the Scriptures, and that we can be dead to sin because of Jesus, and that we can be risen with Christ and, and have God's power in our lives. And that's what he's preaching. And friend, there's a real attraction in that. I want to tell you, I'm, uh, I'm a little bored with uh, intellectual Christianity today. We don't need intellectual Christianity. we got intellectuals all over the place. And I'm not saying cast out reason, cast out common sense, cast out knowledge. I'm saying to you that uh, knowledge puffeth up. And the Bible says so. And we emphasize more what we know than we emphasize the power of God. What we need is more power and a little less uh, men thinking that they're smarter than God himself. And we need to just preach the word of God in power and we'll see God do what God alone can do. We need God's power in our lives. And I want to encourage you today, Christian, don't be content. Don't be satisfied with just going through life and not being a mess. You know, so many Christians just think, well, if, uh, you know, if I've just got a job, I can pay my bills. If I can just get along with people and, and if I can just, uh, you know, uh, do a good job at work and if I can just be a good neighbor and if I can just feel okay about myself, and that's enough. Friend, it's not enough. God did not put you here in this life so that you could get through life. He put you here so that you could advance the kingdom of God, which is in heaven. And the kingdom of God is comprised with the souls of the lost. And God wants you to be able to preach the gospel with power in such a way that individuals will come to Christ. And that will be a passion of your life. And when you go to work your job, the purpose of working your job is how today, Lord, will you use me to preach the gospel and how will you use this job in my life to be able to accomplish the work that I'm on this earth for? We ought to be uh, every day thinking about why we're here and what God wants to accomplish with us. And we ought to be uh, desiring as we do so uh, what we need in order to accomplish that. And we ought to be saying, and our prayer ought to be, God, I recognize today that man can't do what you want me to do. And so I need the power that you have. I need the power that Jesus had when those individuals crowded into the house in Capernaum to hear the word that he preached unto them. And, you know, people want to hear the truth. They really do. You know, we, we you hear all the time the phrases and the buzzwords in Christianity, this day and age, the last days. Friend, we've been in the last days ever since the resurrection. Really have. Um, the, it, it's been coming. We've been told to expect the coming of the Lord Jesus ever since Jesus went to heaven. He said, I'm going to come back. And he said, look for me. And the Bible talks about the blessing of those individuals that look for the promise of his coming. The Bible talks about how we're commanded to look for his coming. That's a given. But there's more to it than that. God has us here not to waste our time and not to waste his, not because he's bored and doesn't know what to do. God has us here to preach the gospel, and he wants us to do so with power. And the foundation of that is the foundation that we find in verse 2 of chapter 2, and that is that he preached the word. You know, I need to just set aside everything else. Hey, I, I, I think that probably apologetics and that sort of thing has its place. You know, we've been kind of in a defense Sunday school class for the last three weeks, and we'll continue two more weeks, and it's kind of an apologetics thing. Why we use the King James Version of the Bible? You know why I want you to know why you use the King James Version of the Bible? So you know what kind of a Bible you've got. So that you can go out and you can preach it with full confidence, understanding that it's the preserved Word of God, and that's 100% true, and that anybody who receives it uh, can, can know for sure that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, know for sure that the promises of salvation are for them, so that they can know for sure that they know Bible truth, and so that you can be confident when you preach the gospel. It's important to know those things, but you know, we, we, we got too much of an apologetics Christianity. We're too much into understanding why evolution can't be so, and why creation must be so. And I, I want to say to you that there's a danger in all this apologetics Christianity, and that all we do is defend our faith, but we don't go out and attack uh, Satan, and we don't attack the gates of hell with the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we're not a threat at all. Because all we're going to argue with are those individuals that are threatening the, the Word of God, and that are threatening uh, the people of God, but we're not going to turn anybody to Christ and that's what we ought to desire to do. And I tell you something, apologetics won't turn anyone to Jesus Christ. The Word of God will. And it will when it's preached with power. And that's what we ought to desire. Christian, uh, that's not for the preacher. It's not just for the preacher. It's not just for the person who's an outstanding member in the church. It's for the person who's been saved by the grace of God and has a relationship with God. And that's you. 
and it's for you to have power. And so this individual, this man who is sick with the palsy, he's got a, got a debilitating disease, he can't move, he's, he's desired to come to Jesus. And I just want to point out to you that most of us think the reason he came was so he could be healed. And you don't ever find any indication of that in this text. They bring in, the, the, the place is so crowded, the Bible says that, that, that there wasn't even room at the door. There was just people crowded around the door and there was just no access to Jesus at all. And so these, this, these individuals are persistent. They want this man to get to Jesus. Now the common misconception here is that they want him to get to Jesus so he could be healed. And I'll submit to you this morning that his need was not healing. Not physical healing. This man had a spiritual need and he wanted to get to Jesus because of that. Does this recall anything to you? Does this bring back any kind of a circumstance in your life or any kind of a, the way things used to be for you? Do you remember how you were before Jesus? And you know, many individuals would describe themselves without Jesus. I've had people say, Pastor, you know, and maybe they just say Ryan or whatever when I uh, meet them and talk to them and they want to know about Jesus. I had a man call a couple of months ago and he called me. He said, I need to talk to somebody. And I said, okay, well, I'll talk to you. And he said, I need to meet with somebody. I need to meet as soon as possible, today if possible. And for whatever reason, I really couldn't meet with him that day. And that's unusual. But he, he said, I need to meet with you. I said, I'll meet with you at 1 o'clock tomorrow. And I said, what, what, what are we meeting about? And he said, I think I'm going to go to hell. And he said, i, I got to talk to somebody. And so I went over to see him. And uh, he said, I think I'm going to go to hell. And I said, why do you think you're going to hell? And he pointed out all the reasons that he thought he was going to hell. I said, well, you're right. You are going to hell. I told him about Jesus. And that man had had a life, had a whole life of just having all kind of problems. But you know what his problem was? His problem was he needed Jesus. You know, everybody's different. They, not, they, people just aren't all the same before they come to Christ. But there's an emptiness. There's a longing. There's a, there's a dissatisfaction. There's an understanding that if life is about the things that the world says it's about, that it's no use even living. But when you come to Jesus, you come to, everything just makes sense finally in your life. And you finally have got it together, and you finally just like, this is truth! This works! This gives me a hope. This gives me a reason. And all the things that the world tries to say life is about, they can just throw them off to the side. They're a bunch of lies. Everything that we think religion is, you can just throw it away. It's just a pack of lies. But in Christ, boy, for the first time, you're healed. You're whole. And you know, most people don't even know they're sick. Well, most people don't even know how sick they are. And you, and you, but you preach the gospel, and God points it out to them. And I hope that this morning, as we preach about the gospel of Jesus Christ, and about what this man sick with a palsy came for, when he came for healing, that you'll remember the time before you were healed spiritually. The time when there was that emptiness and that lack of Jesus Christ. And you didn't have the Son of God in you. You didn't have the Holy Spirit's power in you. The, the, the uh, indwelling Spirit of God living in you. And just were, were empty and you were, you were without hope. And it was just like you, you'd go from this thing and you'd hope that that was going to do it for you. You'd hope, well, you know what, finally. You know, and you look forward to one thing after another in life. You look forward maybe to the time when you got married or the time when you'd get a job or the time when you'd start a career or the time that something in your life is going to happen that's just going to satisfy you. And the only thing you found out every time was that nothing ever would. And no amount of success and no amount of failure did anything for you at all. It just showed you more that how hopeless everything was and how that nothing meant anything at all. And then you came to Jesus and it just everything was put in perspective. And you're just healed. Well, here we find this that these individuals, and I've heard messages preached about the individuals that brought this man to Jesus. I don't know what their motivation was. Maybe they'd been to Jesus beforehand. That's what people do when, when they've uh, experienced Jesus and when they've been saved. They start telling people about Jesus. I love it when I preach the gospel to somebody and they get saved. And the first thing they do is they say, well, you know, I need you to come with me because I need you to explain this to my dad or to my mom or my brother or sister. You know what this person really needs? is uh, that's what the, I know a guy that needs to be saved. And, you know, it's not just them looking at, you know, sometimes Christians are that way and they sit in the pews and they look to the right and they look to the left and the Word of God is preached and they think, boy, I hope he gets this or I hope she gets that. And it's not like that at all. It's just a matter of, I got it now and everybody else needs it because this is the answer to everything in life. And Jesus is the answer. And I'm not being trite. I'm not just stating a, a, a phrase, but Jesus is the answer to everything. 
Yeah, you've got friends and you've got family members and, and they've, they've just got problems and they're so complicated. You say, Pastor, I'd be embarrassed to tell you about my children. Pastor, I'd be embarrassed to tell you about, uh, about my family member or even, you know, I just...